Hi, in this video, we will look at the construction and working of a rotor cap. As you can see in the video, rotor cap turns the valve by a specific amount during its opening. Before we understand how rotor cap works, let's look at the advantages of having a rotor cap. Rotating the valve removes carbon deposits on seating surfaces that may be formed during running of the engine, uniforms thermal stresses on components due to non-symmetrical gas flow in the cylinder, ensures uniform wear on seating surfaces, which in turn reduces the leaks from intake and exhaust valves leading to drop in efficiency, helps to form oil film better between valve and valve guide aiding lubrication. As we know, the valve is opened by a yoke. By rotating the valve, contact point between the yoke and valve stem keeps changing, thereby reducing the wear at a single point. In this exploded view, you can look at the components that makes the rotor cap work. The rotor cap body. Notice the six inclined tracks that are machined into the body, inside which steel balls and springs are mounted. Holes at the end of each track allow the oil to flow into the rotor cap, lubricating the moving parts. In the section view, you can also see the tapered bore into which valve quarters are mounted, holding the valve in place. As the spring exerts upward force on the retainer, the tapered bore of rotor cap body forces the quarters to hold valve in place with friction. Thus, as the rotor cap body rotates, quarters and valve rotate along with it. Notice the section view of the inclined track. These are the springs and steel balls that move inside the inclined tracks. Here we have the disc spring, also known as belly wheel spring. As opposed to other designs where there is a separate ball race, here the flat spring itself serves as a ball race which is made possible by the groove on it. This is the retainer which holds all the aforementioned parts in place. Now let's understand this graph which plots valve lift and valve rotation against time. Point 1 represents the start of valve lift. Line 2 which connects points on both graphs represents the start of valve rotation. Line 3 represents the valve at the peak and end of valve rotation. Point 4 represents valve closure. Thus we can see that valve rotation doesn't start until after the valve begins to open. We will see this later in the animation. Now with this information, let's look at the operation of rotocap. Let's compare this to the graph that we have seen earlier. Now the valve is stationary and is at point number 1, that is start of opening. From point 1 to point 2, notice that there is no rotational moment and valve is about halfway open at point 2. Disc spring is still in the original position which can be confirmed by the distance between rotor cap body and disc spring. From point 2 to point 3, notice that there is rotational moment along with the translational moment of the valve. At point 3, valve is fully open and disc spring is fully compressed. Point 3 is also end of rotation. From point 3 to 3.1, valve is halfway closed. Here, disc spring is still in the compressed state. From point 3.1 to 4, disc spring resets to original position and steel balls move back to their original state and the cycle continues. Here you can see the valve operation from two different angles. On the right, you can see springs compressing and decompressing through the holes in the body. Here I have made the rotor cap body translucent so that we can see how steel balls and springs move inside the tracks. As we have seen before, now valve is stationary and is at point number 1. From point 1 to point 2, valve is halfway open without rotation. If we break down the moment from point 2 to point 3, we can see that rotor cap along with quarters and valve turn to the final position while moving down. At the same time, disc spring is compressed to the final position. However, steel balls are still in their original position, only the rotor cap has turned. Rotational moment of the rotor cap is caused by the force exerted by the steel balls on their inclined tracks. From point 3 to 3.1, valve moves upward without rotation. Disc spring is still compressed and steel balls are in the recessed state. From 3.1 to 4, valve continues to move upward. At the same time, disc spring returns to its original position and steel balls and springs return to their original state, resetting the rotor cap. And this cycle continues. With this, I hope you have a clear understanding of how the rotor cap works.